In this video, we'll show you how to use a shear plate interferometer and interpret the measurements. We'll measure the focal length and show that the lens is well corrected. For this example, we are going to test this 2 inch diameter lens we found in optical surplus. A new lens like this would cost at least $100. Can we reuse this one? Visual inspection shows that this lens looks pretty good cosmetically. Using reflections from the room lights, we see that it's clean and without scratches. The anti-reflection coating is in good condition. We don't see any smears or fingerprints. Here you can see the interface where the two components of the doublet are cemented. This lens is likely well corrected for spherical aberration. Making an image of the room light on the floor, it looks like the focal length is roughly 7 to 8 inches, or a focal ratio of about f4. A shear plate interferometer is a simple optical component consisting of a slightly wedged plate of glass with highly polished, uncoated, optically flat surfaces. Reflections off the front and back surfaces interfere to make fringes. Because of the finite thickness of the plate, the front and rear reflections are displaced or sheared with respect to one another, thus the name shear plate interferometer. The beam shear delta x depends on the plate thickness t, index of refraction n, and the angle of incidence i. If the plate had perfectly parallel surfaces, an incoming flat wave front would produce a single uniform fringe because the optical path difference between the front and rear surfaces is constant. If the surfaces are not parallel but tilted to create a wedge with increasing thickness and height, the optical path difference varies in the vertical direction, producing straight horizontal fringes. Because the shearing interferometer works by comparing the wavefront at two different locations, a spherical wavefront, which is quadratic, produces a wavefront difference that is linear in shear. That is, a non-wedged parallel plate produces vertical fringes for a spherical wave. In the general case of a spherical wavefront incident on a wedged plate, the wavefront difference is linear in both x and y, and the fringes are straight and tilted with an angle proportional to the curvature. Here's the test setup for characterizing our unknown lens. A point source of coherent light is provided by a single mode fiber illuminated by a 635 nanometer laser diode. The diverging beam is incident on the test lens. The distance between the fiber and lens is adjustable with a micrometer. The outgoing beam is incident on the shear plate mounted on a rotation stage, which we set at the conventional 45 degrees. Data are collected using a DSLR without an imaging lens such that the fringe pattern falls directly on the sensor. This is a video of the fringe pattern as the object distance is scanned through focus. As the micrometer is adjusted, the fringes rotate. When they're horizontal, the wavefront is flat and the light is collimated. The most common application of a shear plate is to produce a collimated beam through this kind of manual adjustment and visual inspection. If we record the fringes as a function of object distance and measure their angles, we can find more precisely where they are horizontal. Moreover, since we can measure the radius of curvature from the fringe angle, we can derive the focal length of the lens and the flatness of the outgoing wavefront. The radius of curvature of the wavefront at the exit pupil is equal to the image distance. This means we can use the thin lens equation to relate the object distance to the measured radius of curvature and the focal length of the lens. Here are the measured fringe angles and a fit using an expression for the fringe angle in terms of object distance, shear plate properties, and lens focal length. The best fit yields the best focus and lens focal length, measured to within a fraction of a percent. Since we know the uncertainty of the best focus position, the RMS of the emergent wavefront due to defocus is slightly better than a 20th of a wave at 635 nanometers. By using a shear plate, we now know the exact focal length of our reclaimed lens and that it can be used to deliver a diffraction limited beam. Even though a shear plate is typically used as a simple setup tool to focus a lens, recording the fringes with a digital SLR enables quantitative measurements. In addition to focal length and defocus, we could also measure higher order aberrations by analyzing fringe shape. We may work through this exercise in a follow-up video, so please subscribe or check out the description below. Thanks for watching.